Watch out, wait. So there's some big boys in that mix. Putting everything into it, Nathan Hines. Lamont filled in at halfback now, Blair to Parks. Parks seemed to hook that one and stays in the field of play for Parise. Serge Parise almost slips. Gets under the tackle of Dewey. Hold back. No half back for Italy just yet. Four Kane Robertson lends a hand. Stay there. Stay there. Robertson it is who affects a pretty handy pass. Ramiro Pez. Can't find his wait touch. Wait Back it comes wait for wait the wait Italians. For yes, no, you're right. Robertson inside. That will find touch. Is that his off the side of the boot? Ramiro Pez. Just keep an eye out for The rain continues to fall. San Ebion. Blair finds a back line willing to run at this time. No hands. Oh, it's okay. It's fine. Webster took the hit. Get on side. No hands. No hands. So the Scottish forwards carry him forward. Now advantage being played. Only the half back here. Pass wide. Only the half back in. So we come back for the penalty. The Italians just getting a little bit sloppy with their discipline. Only six minutes to half time. Patterson now with a chance to put Scotland in front. Chris Patterson, his record has been impeccable thus far, three from three. Urged on by those in kilts. Here and afar. This prolific point scorer. Chris Patterson. Makes absolutely no mistake. So Scotland back in the lead for the first time since the... 12th minute of the game when Chong Kong's try put Italy in front. So four penalties to the Scots. Has it over the Italians. One penalty and one converted try. There's no place for the faint-hearted in there, believe me. Blair clears now. Dan Parks... long way from the back blocks of Sydney for Dan Parks. Eight over. Jim Ten. Hamilton, the big Scottish second rower. On the line. He's clearing the ball well though, Dan Parks. To get your team from inside the 22, back outside your half is a great effort. Start the two. So Festjar finds his man, Delape in the line out. Now Pez. Boyce at high, Bergamesco gives chase. Oh, that's spilt by the Scottish player. Advantage to the Italians. Down the touchline they go, but they put a foot in the touch. We're going to play in the scrum. No advantage, scrum. So the first knock on scrum. from... No advantage. The Scottish winger. Oh, it was the barest of tags. The thin of the white line. You go Southwell, the replacement fullback, once again, putting that one to deck. Okay, just take the barn first, and it's a feat, okay? So Jim Hamilton there, just uh, giving the touch judge his version of events. You can see from the ground Touch. underneath the players, Pause. traction is a real Find issue up. on an evening like this. Parise at the back holds the scrum up for the Italians. It's out now for Trongon. Yes, once again, the left foot, once again a tie. 
Once again, Hugo Southwell can't come away with it. Tronkon looks to play on, but the Italians knocked it on first. So in the shadows of half time, let me pull Two out an old, old age cliche. This has been an arm wrestle. <laughs> if ever I've seen one. A game in, of chess. <laughs> Crouch. So you can see the Italians right, right. showing Touch. their intent with any, pretty much any ball in hand. You're going to see a high ball. And as you mentioned, Southwell so far hasn't been convincing under those high balls. To Dan Parks. Right. There's that right foot again. Jim impressed by the way he strikes the ball. Yeah, the boot of Parks up against the boot of that man, Bordelusi. A couple of the highlights for those who enjoy the finer arts of kicking in the game of rugby. When the rain falls, as hard as it is at the moment, you will see a lot of kicking. The territory is the name of the game, Vestia. The Grand Palmer Club in Italy once again finds his man, Galape. Yes. Oh, Borda Lucy. They went back 20 metres to find his boot, and I guess it wasn't a bad roost in the head. No, I, I still find the tactic a little bit bizarre, because in the end they made five metres, but now Scotland have the ball back. So they literally passed it back 30 metres to kick 40. So Ford to Hamilton, and the Scots bring it forward. Simon Taylor crashes ahead. There's plenty being shouted out there from both packs. Hamilton, the tower for Scotland. Forces it back for his halfback. That's Alastair Hogg. So seconds away from half time, and the Scots lead by two. The final chapters of this half unfold. And the pass from Patterson, charged down from Pierce. Cleaned up by Dewey for the Scots. Cleaned up by Dewey for the Scots. It's a little scrappy at this point. Nathan Hines plays half back. And that ball. Into the reserve benches, just near the tunnel, as both sides head for that particular vantage point. Words from their coach, and in a moment, the Rugby World Cup of 2007. Words from Bill Woods. The opening whistle of this World Cup tournament, Scotland and Italy anticipated this game as a playoff for second place in their pool, just as we anticipated that Ben Darwin would be back from Bordeaux for a half-time assessment of this game. Welcome back, Dor. Thanks, Woodsy. The much-travelled Ben Darwin, 12-10 to the Scots at half-time, and a real tactical battle, not the sweeping backline play that we saw when Fiji played Wales, but nevertheless, while a different game of rugby, a very intense and strategic one. It is very much so. Pretty much in the set piece, there's been parity between these two teams. But the, the point of difference is going to be in this game, the ability of the tens, pairs and parks to kick accurately, whether they can basically kick between the posts and whether they can kick to the corners, because the forwards are fighting out their own battle. But so far, there hasn't been a winner. If there is any advantage for any team in this game so far that I've seen, it's the Scottish rolling ball. They've been pretty impressive. Interesting. Italy did scrummage well against the Australians when Australia had their spring tour last year and made it very, very difficult for them. Admittedly, Australia's scrum was in its infancy relative to this World Cup then, but Italy are renowned for having a good scrum, and so are the Scots. They are. They're actually Scottish. Scotland were pretty impressive against Ireland in a trial match earlier as far mm. as the scrum was concerned. Again, we talked about the Italians having a large amount of Argentinians, which always equals scrum success. But it's not going to be about the scrum today. I think it's going to be about kick accuracy and kick chase. You can see the Italians doing a fantastic job here on the kick chase. I thought there was a little bit of obstruction here by the Italian five on this try, but through they go. There's a uh, cause for contention during this tournament about whether obstruction is being used or not, but I think a man standing in that position 
blocking out the two and the one defenders might have been a cause for concern, but the try stands as it is. It was quite odd that, as Ben Chen pointed out, Italy's points came pretty much all of them while Bergamasco was off the field, um, which is good. It shows that they were able to control themselves uh, under pressure. This was an unfortunate incident with Lamont uh, copping the worst of that collision with Massey, but uh, they both came out of it OK. Well, again, our highlights of the first half of the kicks for goal, which is, I suppose, an unfortunate part. It augurs, interestingly, though, for the quarterfinals. If we're going to have wet conditions all the way through, we're looking at who the 10 for Australia is, is Beric Barnes, and he's a little bit inexperienced. And what's our goal kicking been like in the tournament? Not bad so far. Still in the hitting, hitting them quite nicely. But this may be an, a, a forebear of how this tournament's going to go. OK, here are the stats, and it pretty much reflects the struggle that's been for field position and territory. One suspects if there's some juicy turnover ball in the second half and some Italian or Scottish flair can capitalise, it might just break the game open. But it doesn't seem like there's a heck of a lot of points in it, does there? No, but what might happen as the game goes on is the defences will tire and the, the, uh, the tackles will start to come up and a couple of the guys might be able to get a few clean breaks and it might come down to one or two tries or, again, kick accuracy. When we come back from the break, Rupert McCall and Ben Tune will resume their commentary in this vital game to decide a quarter-final spot in the Rugby World Cup, Scotland, Italy. We're back. The Italians, the Scots. There's a lot of different shades of blue in the stands here at Saint-Étienne, but... Someone will be blue at the end of this game. Very physical encounter, Rupert McCall and Ben Tune. Certainly is. Uh, Rory Lamont might be black and blue tomorrow after that unfortunate incident which uh, ultimately saw him leave the field. But it has been a physical clash in these conditions, Tune. And really, uh, at 12 points to 10, it's anyone's guess as to how it's going to go. It certainly is certainly is we expected in these conditions that both forward forward packs would go at each other and then off the back of i guess the either ascendancy that either forward pack obtains or then you know the, the kicking of parks or Guadalupe would determine field position field position absolutely crucial in this match as we've talked about a number of times so we've seen all variety of kicks uh, this evening. We've seen the long kicks, pretty good ones in that respect. The high kicks, the goal kicks, the penalty kicks. I still haven't got a good feel for who's getting on top at the moment. So for mine, the game is still very much in the balance. Santiago Delape. Of course, Marco Bortolami, the regular Italian skipper. Is out injured for this match, and so Delape and Del Father do the job. Scott Murray for Scotland. Their most experienced second rower is also out. Pierre Berbizier <laughs> looks on, and the play gets back underway. Once again, we saw some unconvincing play from the early kicks in the first half, and uh, it's a carbon copy. These starts are absolutely crucial. I don't know if the Scottish needed to carry that out. It's a tough call because the one time that you let it bounce, it'll probably bounce backwards. So we're just after half time here. The world's longest half. <laughs> Jeffrey Guichard. No, they've amended it now on the clock. And Saint Etienne and the trumpets and the drums. The atmosphere continues to follow this Rugby World Cup train. The fest just throw straight to Jim Hamilton there. Jim Hamilton. Flying high for the Scots, but that time Parise for the Italians. Bergamesco has it at the back. The Scots. The count of 
me, Alessandro Jonkin, once again, hoist it high. Kane Robertson pushed the Scottish player out of his road. And Italy earned the penalty. Uh, Scotland not holding their feet. Great work from Kane Robertson. I like the look of this bloke. Plenty of speed. Got a bit of aggression. 